So when Classic came out, I brought out a series of videos that looked at Trade Skill Master and how you can use it to turn a profit. And since then, I've brought out a few more. But one thing that I haven't done, be it for a video or even just for myself when I'm playing, is that I've been very lax on reviewing my groups, what groups I have and what's in them and why it's really important that I get on top of this. So I thought I'd bring out a video today explaining to you all why it's really important to go through and review the groups that you have on Trade Skill Master and not just leave them thinking that they're permanently going to be absolutely fine and it's never going to change and that you've got it all sorted. So let's dive into that. So there are three main reasons why a group might want changing. So this can be what I call inaccurate groups, outdated groups and simply unsuccessful groups. So we're going to have a look at each of them and we're going to talk about how it happens and why reviewing your groups might be able to help either fix the problem or prevent it in the future. So first up, we're going to look at inaccurate groups because that is the simplest and easiest one to look at. And that is basically just going to be that every now and then you're going to want to look at your groups because it's not uncommon when you have a large number of groups with an array of different things that are happening to them through their operations to simply have an item that either doesn't fit the group that it's in or would be better suited to another group. For example, I often find that I have items in my sort of quick selling groups that actually belong in the crafting groups that make them so that I can have them all restock. This is not something that's uncommon and something that I often find when I review or similarly if I am have a group for quick sale that has crafting materials in it that I didn't have the profession for at the time when that material was first put in the group. I've since acquired the profession that uses that material and I'd be better off putting it in a group that automatically sends that material to the appropriate character. So that's inaccurate groups. That's one we'll glance over pretty quickly because it is fairly straightforward. Now, the next one that we're going to talk about is unsuccessful groups. Now, this is a group that you set up with a view to achieving something, but the group simply just never worked. For example, I did a video a little while back that looked at some of my preferred flipping groups that I use for making money. And in that, I did make very clear that I had some experimental groups and one of them was the Frost Spell Power group. Now, the Frost Spell Power group that I have is basically looking at any items that you get during the leveling process that have increased Frost Power by default. With a view to getting some of the less wise mages out there that are looking to do their AoE farming that has become very popular in Classic and making some money off of them because essentially these items are often misunderstood. Now, power leveling frost mages, for anyone who doesn't know, do not want frost power. The scaling coefficients on the AoE spells that they use are really poor, and they're much better off using a lot of intellect for a high mana pool. However, there are plenty of people out there who simply don't know this, so they are going to be buying plus frost spell power with the logic that they use frost spells and it's going to increase their damage and that is fine logic and if you don't know any better it would seem like a pretty good way to go but this is going to result in a lot of people who have these items who are selling them because they know that they're bad the people who are in the know and they're going to make the price very cheap and then i can purchase it from those people and then sell it at a high price to people who don't know that the item is bad and i can make a profit off of them for that that was the view Unfortunately, it never really panned out. It wasn't too hard to buy the items cheap, but sales were infrequent. I was able to make a profit off a lot of the items, but it was infrequent and just not worth the time and effort for the prices involved. So that was a failed group, and going back and reviewing these groups means that I can now just completely eliminate it. Now, the final group I want to talk about is the outdated group. Now, I left this to last because it's the one that's most important, most common, and the one that people just often don't think about. A lot of us think that we might make mistakes and put things in the wrong group, or that things might simply want to be moved into a new group when we get a new profession, because obviously, you've been leveling that profession, you know you're going to want it. However, outdated groups are something that often just slip our mind because, well, we forget about them. That's outdated takes time, and we're human, and we forget things, so... Outdated groups are simply groups that did serve a function at some point, but as the game transitions, our groups need to transition with them. So, for example, I had a group of items 
that I had basically just to sell any of the garbage I got when I was leveling up my first character. Now, at this point, this was obviously early in phase one, and all the rubbish items had great value because everyone's leveling professions and everyone wants a green item to improve their leveling times because they're struggling because they didn't realize how hard classic was going to be in that leveling grind compared to the retail and you could sell pretty much anything and get some decent money for it but then as time developed and people got better at the game or people have already hit max level or they're leveling alts with a bit more knowledge and the market's still flooded with these greens that people don't need because they've been out gold farming and they've been doing all sorts like that, then the market simply vanishes. So you end up with a lot of items that are simply failing to sell. It's not that the items got any worse or anything like that, there's just no demand for it anymore. So this is something that we see a lot when there are phase shifts. And some of these things are fairly obvious, so we, we focus on those, but it's not always on the forefront of our mind to get rid of the old group it's more about preparing a new one for when the next phase hits but saving yourself money by not posting garbage in an outdated group is just as important as making money from the new kid on the block for the profiteer out there now one thing that i would like to make mention of here is going to be the what I've told you about in this video is the different types of groups that you might want to review. And that's not to say that you're not going to want to review operations as well. However, I do personally find that reviewing groups is tends to be a lot more useful. And that is because while a lot of our groups can be outdated or inaccurate, it's highly unlikely that your operations are. If an operation has worked for you, then chances are it will continue to work going forward. It may just need a different group to be assigned to. So the premises that we set our operations up by generally don't change all that much. Obviously things like mailing, where you're going to be sending things to bank characters, you know if you've changed your bank character. It's something that you're going to be able to change very quickly because it's not a problem that you're going to have without realizing. However, things like auctioning groups and the buying and selling prices that we have, if you are got an operation set up where you're purchasing things relatively cheaply to resell at a higher value, that premise is a premise that's used in real life for pretty much all businesses. So that is not a new concept and it's not going to become outdated. What it is that you want to purchase and then sell higher might be. So to reiterate operations can be reviewed but for the most part if you're going to be changing them it's more going to be where those operations are used and also just changing them if you've made some sort of error in the first place now i'm not saying don't review them because obviously the more you review things the more you refine things the better it's going to be in the long run because you'll end up with a very streamlined process but do focus on groups because that is where you're going to see the biggest difference and the last thing that I want to mention is going to be in regards to what to do with these groups when you find them. Now, obviously, in the case of some of them, it's obvious if you have something that's in the wrong group because it was an error on your part, just put it in the right group. But the big thing that I see a lot of people worrying about is when they have an outdated group that's full of items that they still have in stock and they're wanting, they know it's outdated because nobody wants those greens anymore. And they don't know what to do with it. They're like, oh, I want to drop the price. I want to get these things sold. But the thing is, if demand is really that low, then you're not going to shift them. It's as simple as that. The only way that you're going to sell those items is by doing something that's not ideal, such as selling them for lower than the vendor price or lower than a disenchanting price. And those tend to be better solutions. A lot of the times these items that you've got are things that you're going to have got for yourself. You're not making a loss if per se, or even if you are, it's better to cut your losses and get it over and just clear it out as opposed to trying to sell it really cheap. And then you wish you'd vended it because you'd got more money and you're still going to have to pay the auction house fees. Do not be afraid to vendor items. Do not be afraid to disenchant items that if it's going to get you some return, without any further costs, chances are it's going to be a better solution for you than trying to adapt your sales settings. 
But that's going to about do it for me today, guys. I do hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do let me know down below. And if you have any questions, then of course, feel free to ask those as well. But for now, guys, that's going to about wrap it up for me. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one. Later. Thank you.